So, now here's my next project. And I want to be clear, I am not by far the first person to do this. Many, many other tappers have done this. It's all been done before. But again, I want to share you, share with you my experience. I've actually, this is my, uh, this is my third version uh, of this little device that I've, I've done. And each time I, I, I make it again, I kind of figure out some things and make it work better, which is good. Uh, so what I've got here is uh, I've got a board and I've hooked up this board to a, a, essentially kind of like a drum machine or a drum sound module to be technically correct. And when I tap on the board, you get the drum sound, right? Cool. And you know, I can change the drum sound. Uh, Hopefully I can change the drum sound. Cool. So now, like I said, this is, it may be new to you, but technically it's not any, oh, my thing just shut off, too much power. Uh, but technically, oh, it's not so long. good. So technically it's not anything new. Um, it's been done before. I'd like to show you how this works because any, any regular person like you or me can make this. I'm no genius to figure this out. It's really basic stuff. Um, and I'll kind of walk you through how it's done. So I'm going to get a little closer in here. These are exercise pads. You can buy these at uh, Walmart or Lowe's. I don't know, Home Depot might have them too, but I got these ones at Lowe's, but you can get them at Walmart, I think Target online they're uh, they're basically two two by two two feet by two feet yeah and they have like little interlocking pieces here so you can interlock two together so i, I interlocked two of those and then i used the liquid nails to glue them to the uh, part of the board um i'm sure there's other things you can use to glue it i've never used liquid nails to be perfectly honest i was like oh hey liquid nails sounds good sounds tough let's try it and it works works excellent so I glued those to the board, um, and then if you look right here, you have something that's called a drum trigger. Now I have one that's unattached, so I can get up close and show you. And this is the uh, drum trigger, also known as a piezo electric transducer. I like drum trigger. <laughs> a little easier to say. Uh, you got your little. The, the actual uh, piezo electric transducer is down here. It's in a little plastic housing. And there's a little cable that goes out from it and hooks into a quarter inch uh, audio jack there, right? So basic, simple thing. Um, this one is made by a company called Pintech, P-I-N-T-E-C-H. These run about $20. Just go. Basically, this, this part down on the end, the piezo electric transducer, it senses vibration. Now. Whenever you tap on the board, it creates vibration and it sends, when it senses vibration, it sends a signal out this uh, quarter inch jack in, through a cable and into a drum module and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, it, now it gets a little tricky with a device like this that senses vibration because when you tap on a piece of wood, it doesn't just vibrate once and stop, it, it kind of goes vibrate. So it kind of gets a big vibrations and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the trick, that's, that's what, what's been the biggest challenge with this, is how do you get this sensor to pick up that first big vibration and not any vibration after that? Well, there are several ways to do that and uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it's kind of, I don't know, probably boring. <laughs> um, but I will briefly explain. So this is attached to, I got it upside down right now because I've got the lay on top. It's attached to the particle board using what? Something fancy? No, two-sided foam tape. Uh, and it's recommended you use this uh, because the foam uh, acts as an insulator from some of those extra vibrations. So that's one way to reduce it, picking up extra vibrations. And it also uh, reduces the amount of impact that gets applied to the uh, drum trigger. They are sensitive. Although I've been pretty rough with them and they're still working pretty good. Um, when I first used these, I didn't exactly read the manual. Um, and uh, at one point I had them 
like I had no foam tape. I just had them kind of bolted up against the wood. So it was a flat up against it. Don't do that. Not a good idea. <laughs> but they do still work. So I have the, uh, I have that attached. Right? Ah, come on. There we go. I have that attached. Right here. This is another thing I learned originally when I made these and I had the smaller wood, I put it right in the middle and then when I actually read the manual, <laughs> again, you're supposed to have it closer to the edge. You can see how sensitive it is. You can also possibly tell that it is um, velocity sensitive. That means if I hit it lightly, it has a little softer sound. If I hit it harder. All right, so like I said, this is how that, it has a little plug here. Get it done, yeah? This is a basic guitar cable. It's a mono uh, quarter inch guitar cable, actually. Just plug it into there. And actually, this cable was like five or 10 bucks. Uh, you can get them at any uh, music store, again, music, musician's friend online. Um, you can get whatever length you need. So, the question is then, we got the electric signal is coming through the cable and it comes over into my the DM5. It's a drum module. That's kind of a fancy way of saying it's sort of like a synthesizer that only plays drum sounds and instead of a keyboard, it's got these triggers. So you tap on the triggers or you hook them up to a drum or in my case, a wooden board and it sends a signal into this uh, drum module. It's just called the Alesis DM5. Uh, I got this one used on eBay for about 250 bucks, 260 bucks, but that was about five years ago. Um, prices vary online. I saw one the other day as low as 90, although I don't think it was in great shape, but uh, you know, you might be able to get it used as low as 100 bucks. Uh, new, new ones uh, used to be around 365, and again, that was like three or four years ago. So they may be more now, I don't honestly know. Uh, there are other drum modules on the market. The thing I like about this is it's, it's got inputs for 12 triggers. So I can have 12 different boards going all at the same time. Uh, not all of the uh, current drum modules have that many inputs. So that makes this one really nice for this, uh, really nice for this application. Uh, you know, as I'm thinking about it, you probably don't want to know about all the details and stuff like this. Uh, I'll tell you this, I can change sound by spinning the wheel. So right now I have this. And so on and so on and so forth. Now one of the cool things you can do is you can hook this drum module up to a synthesizer. I don't ha I have one, I don't, I don't have it hooked up right now. And instead of this playing the drum sounds, it'll send a signal to the synthesizer and it can play the synthesizer sounds, which is really cool. So if you want piano, you can totally do piano or you want saxophone, you can do saxophone. Um, is that a little bit complicated? Yeah, it's a little complicated to do. It's doable if you're willing to spend enough time on it. Um, but right now, then I have this drum module. I just have that hooked up to a stereo and speakers and I just have it running out the headphones jack. I should have it going out the auxiliary jack, so shame on me, but this works for right now. So that's, that's, that's pretty much how it works. So, you know, if, if you, if you get one of these and you want details on, you know, how do I calibrate this so it doesn't, um, trigger when I don't want it to, or it's not triggering when I do want it to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'd be happy to talk with you on my experience. Um, I have it working pretty well when you're on the board, obviously when you're off, it still triggers, but, uh, the use that I'm using it for, you're, you're going to be want to be on the board the whole time anyway. So, Okay, well that's what I've been working on um, in addition to tons of choreography and teaching and whatnot. Uh, I apologize, my October lessons did not make it uh, out this month. Uh, I will be back on track in November, so expect uh, the first week in November my new lessons will be out. Um, I try to do it at the beginning of the month. If it's not out by the end of the first week of the month, then most likely what has happened is I have gotten flooded with a ton of work or other projects or something has taken over my time to where I don't have enough time to do it. I know some of you may be thinking, well, you had time to make this video. Why didn't you just do the lessons? Well, the truth is that the lessons take a lot more prep time. I have to figure out, okay, what have I already taught, especially my beginners, because I want to make that sequential. 
Uh, what have I already taught? What do I need to teach? How do I want to put that material together? You know, I have to create the combination. Um, the filming takes longer. This is this just requires me walking in and saying, hey, this is what I've been working on. You know, that, that can do that off the top of my head. The classes require more planning. They take a lot longer to film um, and they take a lot longer to edit. This is going to be like edit, cut, in, out, done. Okay, post. So, uh, again, I apologize. October's not up and won't be up in November. I'm going to be back on track. So look forward to your lessons at the beginning of November. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't been, out, been to unitedtaps.com in a little while, go check it out. Looks great. Uh, new design, as I said earlier. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this. You've, you know, these projects are kind of fun and cool for me. And hopefully you're like, oh, wow. And maybe even if you make, you'll make your own. If you make your own shoes or you make your own electronic tap board, let me know. I'd love to, uh, I'd love to see it or hear about it. It'd be really cool. Uh, you can contact me, unitedtaps at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you at the beginning of November. Take care, and bye-bye.